Better change my voice. This video is about Job 38 and 39. I'll get through 40 and 41 in the next video, hopefully. And it's when the Lord speaks to Job. This part of the Bible is very key. It overkills that God expects people to be a man in the Royal African Falcon Martial Art Order. And it talks about things in a way that the Egyptians talked about you know, in, in, in things, you know, they talk about things in a way that's similar to the way the Egyptians talked about it. Okay. For example, God is speaking out of a storm. As a warrior, remember Exodus 15 3, the Lord is a warrior, the Lord is his name. And he's saying, Brace yourself like a man. Okay. And Set and Zeus and Baal are, you know, considered gods of the storm, right? They're evil gods of the storm. So what is going on here is the sun is behind the clouds of the storm okay and he's talking to him through the storm and the storm is like the obstacle course of the world okay so the person who wrote this the bible right they're followers of set in a sense but they know that god is greater than set because they've put things in a way that makes it seem like set isn't so bad okay or that set is honored by god which is not the case it's it's the bible is a bit confusing for that reason, right? By Bell, okay? And it points out in Isaiah that it's purposely confusing because they wanted people to be ever seeing but not perceiving, ever listening but never hearing, you know, hidden in plain view, which is Satanism. Right? These are kind of globalists that found their way into Europe and made that their main base, okay? Said as a deity of foreigners, right? Full reign ears, foreigners. Foreign to the martial art order, those who listen to wickedness, to those you know, those people in denial and so on and so forth. So the Lord speaks. And the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Right? Because Job had been arguing with, you know, various people about why God is testing him. Okay. Why all these bad things were allowed to happen to him. And in the beginning of Job, it made it clear that the devil wanted to test Job because God was very proud of him. And, and the devil wasn't so impressed or whatever reason he had. See, so he says, who is this that obscures my plans with words with, without knowledge, without knowledge of God, right? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me, right? He says, brace yourself like a man, right? You know, God is uh, a warrior, right? Judges 3. He left those other peoples around to teach the Israelites warfare, right? He wanted them to man up. Okay, and face the Philistines and the Amorites and the Jebusites and everybody else, okay, against all odds like a man. And Jesus died against all odds in a sense like a man. John the Baptist, this is God's way. He's a God of those who are loyal to him and he punishes those who aren't and he expects them to man up. It says in Revelation 22, 16, I believe it is, outside the gates are the cowardly. So again, it says, brace yourself like a man. I will question you. And you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundations? Tell me. If you understand. Who marked out its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? Remember in Isaiah 28, 17, it says, Make righteousness and justice the measuring line and plume line. So God's made the measuring line. He made the earth so that righteousness would spring forward and come to him and all the wicked would be destroyed with what's left of the earth, like an apple, right? An apple going rotten. You see, New York is even called the rotten apple. So who marked, and, and the earth itself is like a forbidden fruit for those who don't obey God and those who keep reproducing and those who don't obey God through means, so on and so forth. Okay. On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone, right? I am the stone the builders rejected, the foolish builders rejected. Okay? And... In Isaiah, it says God will come down to do uh, a battle on Mount Zion, right? On this spiritual place in the sky through the chosen one, me, okay? And it talks about hail and thunderstorm, okay? These, these, this spiritual warfare, this warfare based on spirit and principle that comes from the top martial artist who's loyal to God. If you have any questions about that, you know, put it in the comments. I have to keep going. I'm running out of time here. Okay. On what were its footings set, or who laid its cornerstone? While the morning stars sang together, 
And all the angels, or Hebrew, the sons of God, shouted for joy. Okay, those sons of God, what God has sown in the spiritual realm to be his sons and to do his work. Okay, shouted for joy. Who shut up the sea behind doors when it burst forth from its womb? When I made the clouds its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness, when I fixed limits for it and set its floors and bars in place, when I said, this, this far you may come and no farther, here is where your proud waves halt. So again, remember, I don't like the Bible. This is not God actually saying these things in this words. Curse it on they who think that that's the case. Okay, curses on them. This is them saying it poetically your ability to understand what he's getting at means nothing to god it means nothing to me okay it has to do with those who know what they're trying to talk about versus those who don't not those who can can say well the clouds refer to a collection of righteousness they, they don't live righteousness they don't know what they're talking about okay much better is someone who's never read the bible who obeys god through me than someone who's read it more than everyone else who doesn't okay pretty straightforward okay so he says, he, he sets the limits. He said, no farther. You say, righteousness may come, right? The waves are compared to righteousness and justice and peace with God and well-being, right? So those who are right with God can have the waves, you know, can join the waves, can become one with the waves, okay? Those who aren't, okay, um, they don't get to have that righteousness and justice, okay? In the, king's, in the Lord's hand, the king's heart is the stream of water, that he channels to all who please him, right? Jesus calms the waves, calms the storm, and so on and so forth, okay? The water of life, the water, the, the living water of God. Have you ever been, have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place? That it might take the earth by the edges and shake the wicked out of it? Okay, so you see... That's what he's referring to, right? The dawn, its place. So did you give? So God gave me my place, and these people who try to argue that I'm not in charge or that I'm not supposed to be in charge, okay, are being shook out of the spiritual realm and into hell, right? They're being screened out where it matters most. Not screened out, not not their flesh screened out. Like I'm getting my flesh screened out, but my spirit is going to come to right God's right hand and punish everyone who didn't obey God through me and their offspring for eternity. Okay, so that it might take the earth by the edges and shake the wicked out of it, figuratively speaking. Proverbs 4, 18, the path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter to the full light of day, so that intensity, my greatness will grow, and their punishment will be intense and forever. The earth takes shape like clay under a seal, its features stand out like those of a garment. The wicked are denied their light, and their unpraised arm is broken. Read, write this one down. This one is key here. Just like verse 3 where he says, Brace yourself like a man. Job 38 verse 3 and Job 38 verse 15. The wicked are denied their light. Right? They don't have any inner light. They don't have a soul. Right? S-O-L and S-O-U-L. S-O-L in Spanish is sun. They don't have the, the light of what the sun is, is, is figurative of. What the sun is symbolic of. When God put it in the sky. What the sun represents in the heavens. When you look at the patterns of nature, right? They don't have their essence. They don't have a light essence. They don't have a divine light in them, okay? And their unpraised arm is broken. Their works are broken. Their you know, arm, especially in a warrior context, right? You know, taking a rod and dashing the souls of people to pieces for rebellion against God, okay? Um, taking the sword of Scripture, the sword, you know, using the sling to sh strike down Goliath, picking up Goliath's sword and cutting off his head with his own sword, right? The arm, their arm is not praised. Their arm is, is laughable. Anyone dumb enough to so-called praise it is the praise of an idiot, which is worthless, is not true praise. And anyone pretending to praise it is being an idiot. And again, it, 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 they're, they're not truly praised. They're just given lip service by bootlicking, lemming, Jetson and Simpson dogs and brutes and assorted filth. Okay, that's not the same as true praise. 16. Again, when they say the, the light has dawned, right? It has dawned on you. The light has dawned. They, they don't have mental clarity. They don't know why they're here. They're not true leaders. The governing class, not true leaders. Okay? Because the, they don't have a light. The wicked are denied that light because they're wicked. They cheated me out of my rightful place. And they, they damned their offspring to hell. They're nowhere near worthy leaders. And their unpraised arm is broken. They may as well not have an arm. And they, in a sense, they don't have an arm. 
Have you journeyed to the springs of the sea and walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been shown to you? Have you seen the gates of the deepest darkness? Have you comprehended the vast expanses of the earth? Tell me if you know this. What is the way to the abode of light and where darkness resides? So what is the source? What is the true source of the abode of light? Uh, you know, of light? What is the true source of darkness? What is the essence of it? Do you know the way? No, they don't know the way because they're not moving in a martial spirit. When God speaks to Job, he says, you're not the top martial artist. You don't know what you're talking about. He says, you're not me or my son, but you are praised by your actions. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Can you take them to their places? To their places? Do you know the path to their dwellings? Surely you know, for you were already born. You have lived so many years. Have you entered the storehouses of the snow or seen the storehouses of the hail, which I reserve for times of trouble, for days of war and battle? So again, hail for days of war and battle. Hail and snow, right? Where snow falls from the sky, right? Hail, lightning, thunder, okay? Comets, right? Meteors, you know, rather, okay? The sun when it burns, right? These, these, these things have to do with divine war. They're symbolic of divine war. They're signs of the divine war in the spiritual realm. They're a point of reference to understand the spiritual realm. Things like this, okay? Which I reserve for times of trouble, for days of war and battle. What is the way to the place where the lightning is dispersed or the place where the east winds are scattered over the earth? He's not talking about the science of it. He's talking about the spiritual understanding of it, the spiritual source of these things, okay? It happens in the spirit realm when the true lightning of God, not the lightning that strikes the earth or that you, you see strike the earth, okay, um, where it's dispersed, right? Where it is sent on its way, where it's told to strike all over the earth, or the place where the east winds are scattered over the earth. Who cuts a channel for the torrents of rain and a path for the thunderstorm? To watcher a land where no one lives, an uninhabited desert, to satisfy a desolate wasteland and make it sprout with green with grass? Does the rain have a father? Who fathers the drops of dew? From whose womb comes the ice? Who gives breath to the frost from the heavens? When the waters become hard as stone, when the surface of the deep is frozen, can you bind the chains of the Pleiades? Can you loosen Orion's belt instead of chains? It is saying Hebrew beauty, right? Can you do, you, do you truly have control over the beauty of these things? What happens when a wicked person marries an attractive female? Her beauty dwindles, okay? Once, once the wicked take control of things, they, they, they cannot bind the beauty. The, the beauty starts dwindling away. The wickedness ruins it, right? Like a gold ring in a pig's snout is a beautiful female who shows no distraction, especially if she shuns the most righteous person ever for the plans of the wicked, for the groups of the wicked, for individual wicked people, for her wicked children, what have you. So they can't bind, they can't keep, they can't maintain the beauty of the, the, of, the of, of beautiful living things. Can you bring forth the constellations in their seasons or lead the bear with its cubs? There's astronomy connections, okay? And also says, or the morning star in its seasons or out of Leo. Do you know the laws of the heavens? Can you set up God's dominion over the earth? Can you raise your voice to the clouds and cover yourself with a flood of water? Do you send the lightning bolts on their way? Do they report to you? Here we are. Who gives the Ibis wisdom, right? Ibis thought, right? It seems said to be a god of wisdom in Egyptian mythology. Who gives the Ibis wisdom? Or gives the roosters un understanding. I wonder if the Jews just made up the Egyptian interpretations, because that's one hell of a you know a coincidence, right? But to some degree they didn't, because it's 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 drawn there. To some degree they're they're reaching when they explain Egypt, but you know, so they they did one way or another. To to what degree? But all right. Also it says, you know, gives the wis the ibis wisdom or before the rooster crows. Okay, excuse me, or, or, or gives the rooster understanding. Okay, I was, I was citing when um, Peter was told that he's going to betray Jesus before the rooster crows. So the rooster is symbolic of understanding. So he didn't understand. And when Jesus said, Jesus said to him, before you turn, when you turn back, straight to strengthen your brothers. Who has the wisdom to count the clouds? Who can tip over the water jaws of the heavens when the dust becomes hard and the clouds of the earth stick together? Okay, I'm going to explain to you about the morning star in a second in the next video. Do you hunt the prey for the lioness to satisfy the hunger of the lions when they crouch in their dens or lie in wait in a thicket 
who provides food for the raven.